more power in what we live versus what we say. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let our life be a praise to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
turn your grave into a garden. He can turn your valley of bones into a, a, a mighty army. God is a great, great God. Hallelujah. Let's give each other a clap off of appreciation for being in the house of the Lord today. My Lord, you look good. You look good. You look good. Now just wave at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you, good, you look good today. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated today. Thank you so much for being here. What a joy it is to have you in the house of the Lord. Um, so thankful to have everybody here. So thankful to see some folks that um, have begun to feel comfortable in coming back. And thank you so very much for being here today. God is an awesome God. He is truly an awesome, awesome God. And we appreciate you being here this morning. I think I'm going to continue maybe until the Lord changes me. I kind of like... Um, doing the announcements at the end. That way, I, you know, I, I just want to keep moving. You know what I'm saying? The kind of spirit of God's moving right now. Let's, let's, keep, let's keep moving with, with him. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so we're going to continue our worship, our praise. There again, we don't see tithing and offering as a transition into service. We just see it as a, as a, as a, as a continuation 
of songs. Amen. You worship God in so many ways. You can worship Him through song. You can worship Him through prayer. You can worship Him through now the opportunity of giving of our tithe and offering this morning. So I ask you once again, the buckets are there in the, in the, in the aisle ways. I understand many of you use the buckets on the way out, and that's perfectly fine. But at this moment of time, if you want to make your way to one of those buckets there, that's the tithe and offering, uh, let's continue our praise and worship this morning. I want to say thank you today for a church that doesn't have to be hyped up. I don't have to coach you every, every, every Sunday. You believe the Word of God. Amen. And the Word of God says that we are to give our tithe and offering. You are a wonderful congregation that does that. And I thank you so, so very much for that. And because of that, we're able to do many things outside of, the, outside of the four walls of the church that we're very, very thankful for. And we appreciate you so very much and all that you're doing in your tithe and offering. So we're going to release you now at this time to continue your praise and worship in the giving of your tithe and offering there in the buckets as the music team comes and minister to us this morning in another song. Jesus, you wash my sins. 
of our lives. We wake up every morning to fresh mercy. I don't know about you, but I thank God for His grace, and I thank God for His mercy. Whoa, Lord, He has not given me some things that I deserve. He's withheld some things from me that I deserve in regard to, to wrong, for bad. God is a merciful God. He is full of grace. Come on, as you're standing, getting prepared for the Word of God, just sing a little bit more. That may be your verse, Pastor Curtis, if you would. Let's just sing this one more time, a little bit more of this. Let's get ready for the Word of God this morning. You gave me beauty for my guilty stains. And now I'm living day to day by your grace. So excuse me if I can't contain my praise. today for his grace and his mercy let him know it today just in case you don't know today God's been good to you God's been good to me his mercy endures forever hallelujah and ever and ever thank God for his mercy this morning praise the Lord you look mighty good today I don't know if you feel as good as you look but you look good praise the Lord we appreciate you being in the house of the Lord and um, we, we will recognize the first-time guests in just a few moments. Um, but I do want to give a special welcome today. I believe honor is where honor is due today. And um, we have uh, the privilege today of having Brother Tim, which is the new director for our children's uh, home there in Turbyville. Brother Tim, it's an honor to have you in the house today. Let's give Brother, Brother Tim a big welcome today. Amen. Looking forward to building that relationship with Brother Tim and continuing to hopefully be a uh, part of the children's home. We're so, so appreciative of the children's home and the work that they do there. We give God praise for them. And we do welcome him into our area and we welcome him into uh, Great Commission Ministries. We honor you, sir. We truly honor you in Jesus' name. All right, if you got your Bibles today, if you go to the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John chapter 20, let's begin reading with verse 19. The Gospel of John, begin reading uh, chapter 20, verse 19, and we'll read down to verse 23 this morning. Hope everyone had a good uh, Easter on last weekend, and hope you had a good spring break. Most folks were out on spring break this week, and uh, we hope you had a good time. Um, but we are delighted to have you this morning in the house of the Lord. In John chapter 20, let's begin reading with verse 19. Then the same day at evening, the same day of the resurrection, the same day at evening being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Now, the King James does not read it like this, but the 
better translation, honestly, of that, if you read it behind other translations, the better translation is that, is, is verse 19, let me just stop there, make sure I say this, is that when the doors were shut, most translations, and it better translates as when the doors were locked. The doors were not just shut, but the doors were locked. And said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. I want to preach this morning, if I can, as we begin a new series, still continuing to um, zero in on our theme for the year, which is Shake It Off. But I want to start a new series today, if I can, uh, called The Journey to Pentecost. The Journey to Pentecost. I want us to look at that for a few weeks if we can. But I want to preach this morning on verse 19. Then the same day, the same day of the resurrection, at evening time, the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, locked, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Father, we thank you this morning for this privilege and for this honor to not only be in the same room, in the same fellowship with your good folks this morning who have chosen to be in this house, but I'm special and honored today to be behind your pulpit to preach your infallible word. Incapable as I am, God, not in any way equipped as I should be, I'm sure, but God, I'm thankful today that my hope and my uh, reliance is not on myself, it's on you. And I thank you today that you, the Holy Ghost, is well able to help that which you have put into me come out with impact. And I pray now, Father God, that you will remove any obstacle this morning, anything that may try to keep me from preaching with ease and may keep just trying to keep your people from receiving. We come against that now in the name of Jesus, and we declare today that there is victory in this house. There is victory in this house. We are overcomers, and we are more than conquerors. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I thank you for it this morning. Minister, we pray as we endeavor now, God, to open up your word, to preach your word to your people, that we all may leave here saying, I was glad that I was in the house of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated this morning in the presence of the Lord. There again, never to embarrass you. We're not going to ask you to come up or do anything like that. But I just, I just sincerely feel this way. Because when anybody attends the church that I'm pastoring, it's an honor. Because they have so many other choices that they could go to. Um, but yet they've chosen to be in this house. And for that, I'm truly honored today that, that you are here. For those who come on a regular basis, we thank God for you. Thank you so much for being faithful and consistent in the house of the Lord. But is there anybody other than, of course, Brother Tim that I, that I recognize? Is there anybody this morning else that may be here for the first time? We just want to celebrate you. We just want to say thank you for being in the house of the Lord by a clap off of appreciation. Is there anybody else this morning that may be here for the first time? Amen. All right. So that means either you don't want to raise your hand or everybody's been here once, at least once. But however, can we give each other a clap off and a praise one more time of appreciation? Thank you so much for being in the house of the Lord today. As I said, we want to continue. We will continue talking about our theme. If you don't have you a, a bracelet, they're out there for your getting. Um, our theme for the year is taken from the book of Acts where Paul shook off the viper into the fire. And uh, we, we believe that this is the year that God's going to help us shake some things off. Amen. And I wish I would have thought about it before this very second of time. I would have captured the, the Facebook post that one of one of you folks, I won't highlight your name, but one of you posted this week, and, and uh, the post went something like this, is that uh, Pastor Derek's been preaching and, be and believing that we're going to shake some things off this year, and I'm here to testify on Facebook. She, the, the person said, I'm here to testify on Facebook that um, 
as of today, two of those things has been shaken off. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is awesome. Amen. And I'm looking forward to hearing some more. I don't have to have the specifics by any means, just to know that, that uh, God's doing some work in your life, and we give God praise for that this morning. But I want to continue now as we uh, re resurrected, or Christ was resurrected on last Sunday. I want to continue now moving forward with Christ as we make our way to the day of Pentecost. I want to follow his journey for, for a few Sundays if I can, and I want to talk to us about the journey to Pentecost. So I want us to pay attention in the next several weeks. I want us to pay attention to Jesus uh, from his resurrection uh, up to uh, the, the day of Pentecost. Of course, we can only follow him um, in regard to while he was on earth up to his ascension. So this journey is going to consist of uh, the first 40, the, the 40 days after the resurrection of Jesus up to his ascension. He was after the resurrection. He was upon the earth 40 days, and then he ascended. And then we're also going to include in this journey uh, the last 10 days, which was the 50th day, which was the day of Pentecost. Pentecost means 50th. So we're going to take this journey now of about 50 days. We're going to look as close as we can at Jesus during this 50 days and see what we can learn uh, along this journey. And in today's, I want to look at the afternoon of the resurrection. I want to look at that afternoon time where uh, the story reveals that his disciples, now in this, in this group here behind uh, the doors of a dwelling place, was ten of his disciples, um, minus Judas and minus Thomas, okay? Judas was not here, of course, and Thomas was not in this particular uh, uh dwelling place at this time. He later shows up another time, eight days later when Jesus came again. But in this particular time, it was that we know of ten of his disciples that were there, minus Judas and also minus Thomas. And I want to look at this experience today, this story of, of where they were behind these doors, these locked doors, and Jesus came through the door and began to minister to them and began to set them on their, uh, their destiny of to go and to minister the Word of God. In this text today, I want to look at five things, if I can. Today's magical letter is C and the magical letter of D. C and D, amen. Praise the Lord. So I want to look today at the condition of the disciples. I want to look at Christ and the doors. I want to look at the communication of the divinity. I want to look at the change of the distressed. And I want to look at the command to their destiny. I want to look again, once again, I want to look at the condition of the disciples. I want, to look at the, I want to look at Christ and the doors, the communication of the divinity, and I want to look at the change of the distressed and the command of their destiny. Let me first of all begin to address this morning, if I can, uh, for a few moments of time, for a little while, anyhow, you got time to listen, let me pre preach the whole thing? Amen. Amen. Let, me, let me first begin to look at uh, the condition of the disciples, the condition of the disciples. We find here in verse 19 is that these disciples had gathered themselves in a dwelling, some, some place, some dwelling, some house, some building, something of dwelling that had doors. They had gathered themselves um, behind these, uh, inside of this dwelling, and the Bible is very specific here in telling us that it was not just they was inside of a home, but they had locked the doors. They had locked the doors, and the reason why they had locked the doors, because they were in fear. They were in fear of the Jews. So here you have a group of Christians. Can we say that? Can we have here even a little bit closer his disciples? Okay, so these are people of God. Can we agree with that? Amen. So they were just like many of you this morning. They were believers. They were disciples of his, and, and they had found themselves locked in a building behind closed doors, and they had found themselves there because they were in fear. They were living in fear of the Jews. They were, they were living in fears of the Jews because they felt like that they too, potentially, the Jews could have them killed as well, that they could become suspected criminals for 
in, in, in the mind of the Jews, perhaps thinking that they may have taken the body of Jesus at, you know, at the resurrection. And, and so they were fearful. They were fearful that they could be killed, that their lives could be in danger. And they were fearing what these people out there, the Jews, could possibly do to them in regard to what uh, may happen at the resurrection because they knew that they were followers of Christ. And when I read this verse, now this just stick with me for a little bit here. When I read this verse, I love the Word of God, by the way. You can read the Word of God today, and the Holy Spirit can speak to you about something. You can read the same thing tomorrow, two weeks down the road, and He'll speak to you about something just, just something uh, amazing. And when I read this verse this morning, um, this week, as I was in preparation, when I read this week, I feel like, the Holy Spirit uh, checked me or the Holy Spirit opened up my eyes and the Holy Spirit began to reveal to me that, that Derek, that this is exactly where not only you have been and maybe even where you are right now, but where other disciples are as well. And, and it's simply this, is that many disciples, many people who are Christians are just like these Jews. Amen. We not, may not be fearing our lives, but we're just like, uh, not these Jews, but these disciples. We're just like them. We have locked ourselves behind closed doors, not physically, but rather emotionally, out of fear of getting hurt by somebody. Can I preach for a little bit? Amen. We, we as disciples, in other words, this applies to all of us. Whether you're a disciple or not, uh, this morning I'm here to believe that the Holy Spirit has brought me here. Maybe not with a shotgun approach as much as maybe a rifle approach. Is that we are just like the disciples where they have physically locked themselves behind uh, closed doors. We as disciples, if we're not careful, we too have locked ourselves emotionally out of fear of being hurt by people. Very alive, very much a child of God, very much all, all the above, very much functioning in life, but yet there's a wall, there's a door that we have put between us and other people to be sure that we don't get hurt because we fear of getting hurt. Maybe you fear of getting hurt because you've been hurt in the past or maybe you see others get hurt and so whatever the reason might be, we have locked ourselves in, we have locked our heart we are existing, we are children of God, but we have put our hearts, we have put our lives behind closed doors because we are just simply not willing to take a chance to let just anybody and everybody get too close to us. Can I preach here for a moment? In other words, we are living, but yet we are living in hiding. We are breathing. We are disciples, but yet we are in hiding. Now, folks, maybe nobody else wants to be brave and be transparent, but I relate to this very clearly. Very clearly do I relate to this as a person that intentionally or not intentionally, I would say intentionally, have put myself on purpose behind closed doors so that I don't let people get too close to me because if they don't get too close to me, then they can't do but so they can't do no damage. I try to love them at a distance. I, I try to, oh, help me out, somebody. I, I try to befriend them at a distance. We might communicate, but what you don't know is that there's a wall between me and you. Hallelujah. Now, now listen to me this morning. I'm not promoting this. I'm trying to be real. And I want you to be real this morning. God can't help people who aren't real. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
They didn't hide it. They, they, were, they had the doors locked. Now, listen to me. I do want to say this. This is not an unwise practice at times. It's not an unwise practice. As a matter of fact, Solomon teaches us in Proverbs 4 and verse 23, Solomon says, keep or guard what? Your heart with all diligence. Why? Because out of it, the heart are the issues of life. Folks, you've got to be careful who you allow to get too close to your heart. Because in your heart are the issues of life. And you must be diligent to protect that heart. Now, I, I, so I support Solomon's teaching there. But I'm trying to also make a point today. Is that in the process of guarding our heart and trying to keep people from coming in, and hurting us. What we do many times is that in the process of keeping those that will hurt us out, we keep those who will help us. We keep those who will help us out as well. And folks, we do need people in our life to help us. Praise the Lord. So it is a fine line here, I confess to you. But what I'm trying to get our attention here this morning is that God, Jesus Christ, wants to invade your door. He wants to invade your door. A million people who sit in churches today are just like these disciples. Rightfully so, perhaps. Rightfully so, perhaps. You're just like Jericho. Jericho was surrounded by walls. You couldn't get into Jericho without going through the walls. Am I preaching right here? But what did God do? God invaded Jericho. The first thing he did, though, was what? Break down the walls of Jericho. I've just come by today to tell somebody is that God wants to break down the walls in your life. Hallelujah. He wants to come by today and help somebody begin to move out of fear and move into faith. Can I keep going? Hallelujah. Is this making any sense? We're just like Jericho. We got walls built around us. We're existing in society, but we, we won't let just anybody in. Hallelujah. We're just like them. But God wants to break the walls down in your heart today. Hallelujah. Now I want us to keep moving forward here. I don't want to preach too long. So you understand the condition of the disciples. They had found themselves on purpose, locked behind closed doors because of fear of getting hurt by outsiders or by people. Now, folks, let me tell you, everybody that says they're for you ain't for you. Amen. I, I, I don't have the answer to tell you how to, 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 to walk that thin line. But I am here to tell you today, I don't believe for a moment is that Jesus wants me to live my life behind closed doors. He don't want me to live my life behind closed doors, all locked up and, and holding everybody at a distance. Praise the Lord. Let me keep going now so we see the, 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 the condition of the disciples. And now in that same verse, we see Christ at the doors. Christ at the locked doors. Or Christ and the locked doors. So you see here now, the doors were locked. The doors were shut. Amen. And Jesus came in. The Bible says, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, peace be still. So picture in your mind now, he would have not been able to do this, or he, we have no record of this ever happening prior to the resurrection. But remember after the resurrection, amen, he's taking on a new body. Help me out. He's taking on a, a new body. Hallelujah. So here, here now, Jesus did not turn the knob, or he did not knock on the door and say, let me in. He did not do that. Hallelujah. He just made his way through the door. He walked through the door and the door never opened. Hallelujah. 
And when he got in there, he didn't just go anywhere in the house. He went right where they were. And he stood right in the middle of them. And he said to them, peace, be still or peace be unto you. Hallelujah. I don't want you, I'm not sure if you're getting what I'm trying to say here. Is that I want you to understand the condition of the disciples. Many of us are right, right where they are, or at least we've been there somewhere. But I want you to see Christ at these doors. Jesus walked through, he walked through these locked doors. He didn't walk in them, he walked through them. Come on. I said he didn't walk in them, he walked through them. Hallelujah. And when I was reading this, Pastor Heidi, the Holy Spirit began to minister to me again. And, and what came to my mind is that there is no door. There is no door. There is no lock that can keep Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I, I, I don't know what lock is holding your doors closed. It might be past pain of somebody. It might be of something that's happened in your past. It might be the way somebody hurt you somewhere down the road. It might be because of what you're going through right now. I don't know. Maybe it's something you saw your mama go through or your daddy go through. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you today, it don't matter what it is that's got your door locked, that Jesus is able to push through that door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God broke down the walls of Jericho, and I'm telling you that Jesus can walk through your doors. Jesus can walk through your doors, and he can conquer. He can conquer your fear. He can conquer your pain. He can conquer your concern. He can do it. Hallelujah. Now, when I was reading this, also what came to my mind was, why did Jesus do this? Why did he do this? Now, first of all, you ought to have to, have to uh, easily see here the omniscience of God. It wasn't like Jesus was in the house and he picked up that they were fearful. No, his omniscience moved him to that. Hallelujah. I believe his omniscience knew that they were locked behind these doors. Now, these are his disciples. So what made him walk through these doors of the disciples and speak peace be unto you? It's an easy answer. It's really the answer on why God does so many good things for us all. He loves us. I hope that's not new news to us. He loves us. Now, folks, let me tell you, we hear that so much that that don't really excite us sometimes. Folks, we need to be excited today that Jesus still loves us. He still loves us, even when I'm walking in fear, even when I don't act like I should act, even when I don't do all I should do. He still loves us. Hallelujah. Paul said, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, or nor locked doors, hallelujah, shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I just really feel like this morning I'm talking to some people. If you would just recognize today, that Jesus will come through that door. He'll come through that door. I really feel like today that Jesus is ready to walk through somebody's door. Hallelujah. He's ready to walk through somebody's door. If you're lost, he's ready to walk through your door. If you're saved but you got a wall up, he's ready to walk through that door. Hallelujah, whatever's got you locked in, he's ready to walk through that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, let me keep going here this morning. So the condition of the disciples, Christ and the locked doors. Now let me look, for, look quickly here at the communication of the divinity. The communication of the divinity. Now just a little side note, you don't have to care about this at all, but I think it's worthy to, to at least point it out. Amen. And here in this one little story, these, first, these four verses are four 
you have four, five verses of Scripture. In these five verses of Scripture, we see the trinity of the divinity. We see the triune Godhead right here in this story. Amen. In verses 19 and verse 20, we see Jesus Christ. In verse 21, we hear about the Father. In verse 22, we hear and we learn about the Holy Ghost. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> That's just a little side note. Take that home before what you may want to have it for. Amen. So I brought that in there, though, is because we see the divinity in communication to the disciples who are locked behind doors that Jesus has invaded, and now the divinity begins to communicate to them. The communication is a twofold message. The twofold message is a message, number one, of comfort. That's a message of verbal. That's a verbal message that came out of the lips of Jesus two different times. Jesus said to them, what? He said, take comfort. Peace be unto you. And today the message of comfort is still the same. Divinity would have me to say to you today, but whether you want to say hear it from me or just let them say it to you. Peace. Peace. Be unto you. It was the first thing he said when he got in there. And after he got in, he said it the second time. He said unto them, peace be unto you. He was bringing comfort to their fear. And I'm here to tell somebody today is that Jesus is able to speak peace to your troubled soul. Amen. But not only was it a communication of comfort, which was verbal. It was a communication of confirmation. It was a message of confirmation. Amen. Which was nonverbal. So Jesus used his, his words, opened up his mouth, and said to them, Peace be unto you. He said it to them twice. He brought comfort to them. He brought comfort to them. I believe today that we can also say that the message of comfort the message, the verbal message of comfort is when I read the Word of God. So, because when I read this Word, I'm reading Jesus, amen. I'm reading divinity. I'm reading what the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is saying to me. Help me out, somebody. So, when a time of locked doors in your life, don't run from the Word, run to the Word. Don't run from church, run to church, amen. Hallelujah, get in the presence of his word and let him speak to you. Let him speak to you. The, uh, in Revelation it says that he has, his voice is as a sound of many waters, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's power in the voice of God. Let him speak to you. He may speak to you in a fire, he may not. He may speak to you in an earthquake, but he may not. Sometimes he'll speak to you in a small, still voice. Help me out, somebody. I don't know how he's going to talk to you, but when he begins to talk to you, you'll hear these words, peace be unto you. But then he didn't just use his words. He gave them a message of communication or a message of confirmation, non-verbally. So verbally, he said. Non-verbally, the Bible says he showed. He showed them his hands that were nail pierced. He showed them, the Bible says, his side where they had pierced him in the side. Hallelujah. So he didn't just give them a message of comfort verbally, but he gave them a message of confirmation uh, non-verbally. And that's why he can say in Revelations, he was saying the same thing here. When he didn't open up his mouth and say it, but here he said to them non-verbally, I am he that was dead, but behold, I am alive forevermore. Why didn't he just say to them? Why didn't he just say? Why didn't he just, just give them a message of, co of comfort? Why did he give them a message of confirmation? Why did he show them his hands in his side? Because he was confirming to them. He was confirming to them that I am the resurrection. And I am the life. Hallelujah. So really what he was trying to get them to understand is that you see this? 
You see this? I am he that was dead, but I'm alive. I am he that they crucified, but I rose again this morning. Help me out. Hallelujah. So what he was trying to get them to understand today is that you don't have no reason to fear. You don't have no reason to live your life behind closed doors. You don't have no reason anymore, hallelujah, to say I cannot let myself go ahead and be what God wants me to be. No, because I am the resurrection. There's nothing that you need that I cannot do. If I'm able to raise myself from the grave, I'm able to heal your body. I'm able to heal your mind. I'm able to heal your pain. I am Jesus, the resurrection. So it was a message of comfort verbally. And then it was a message of confirmation non-verbally. He's able this morning. I'm going to say it from the rooftop. I'm going to say it across the world through the airways. He's able. He's able. He's able. Hallelujah. He's able. Preacher, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I've been in. You don't know what I've been through. I said he's able. He's able. He's able. Let him minister to you. Hallelujah. Let him minister to you. So we see the condition of the disciples. We see Christ at the door. He just walked in. He walked through, not walked in. We see how the divinity communicated to the disciples verbally as a message of comfort, non-verbally as a message of confirmation. And now we get to the latter part of verse 20, and we see this, the, the change of the distressed. We see the change of the distress. The latter part of verse after he showed them his hands and showed them his, his side and had spoken to them, peace be unto you. Verse 20b says, then, then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Folks, there was a change that took place among the distressed. There was a change they moved from fear, anxiety, concern, all up tight, not knowing, closed behind doors, not wanting to let anybody hurt them. We move from that distress to now those same people be glad. There's only one thing difference between their distress and their gladness. It's not a thing. It's a he. His name is Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ and the message of comfort and the message of confirmation. Peace be unto you and I am able to do what needs to be done. Hallelujah. And when they recognize that, when they got a hold of that, they change. Oh, hallelujah. I might be a little loud. I'm not trying to be loud. I just feel when I'm preaching. Hallelujah. So receive the message from Jesus. The message of comfort, the message of confirmation. Receive it. Hallelujah. The psalmist said, as the psalm said, I didn't know that psalm was going to be sung this morning. God's so good. But the psalmist said, thou hast turned for me. Thou hast turned for me. Stop right there. Somebody say, for me. I'm not, I'm, I'm, at this moment of time, I don't want you to get your attention on somebody else. For me. For thou, oh God, has turned for me. Turned. <laughs> turned. Hallelujah. The change of the distress. They turn from distress to gladness. He's in the psalmist says, Thou has turned for me my mourning and switched out my mourning for a dance. 
and thou hast taken off my sackcloth. That sadness, hallelujah, and has girded me with gladness. Somebody ain't got this. Somebody ain't got this. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm trying to come by and help somebody understand is that when, when Jesus walks through your locked doors, he's able to change your situation. He's able to change you from sadness to gladness. He's able to change you from mourning to dancing. He changed the distress. But a period I really feel when I was putting this together that God was going to start changing some things. I just feel it in my spirit. I'm not trying to make this up, but I feel there's an atmosphere of change. An atmosphere of change in this room. Not because I'm preaching. Not because of the song selection, but because Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the house. Hallelujah. You're not, you're not waiting on him. Listen to me. You're not waiting on him to crash through your door. He's not, you're not waiting on him to crash through your door. Hallelujah. He's already there. He's already through your door, but what he's waiting on you is to receive the message of hope, receive the message of confirmation. Once you receive the message of comfort and you receive the message of confirmation, then your life and your situation can be changed. Can be changed. Hallelujah. He's not waiting for you to invite him in. Sinner folks said, I thought I had him invite him in my heart. No, he's already there. He's just waiting on you to accept what he's done. <laughs> he's already, he's already there. He has invaded your door. But the reason why he's there, but we still locked up, is because we haven't received the messages. It wasn't until they received the message that their change took place. They did not change as soon as he walked in. And then, and then, what is then? After he spoke and after he showed. And they received it. And when they received it, boom. It didn't take three weeks to get them changed. They changed just like that. They changed just like that. And I feel this in my heart that God wants to bring change today. Hallelujah. Are the, are the people still going to be out there? Are the obstacles still going to still be out there? Are, are, are the chances of you getting hurt again still out there? Are, is all the things of life still going to be out there? Yes. Ha, hallelujah. But I'm going to walk not in fear no longer. I'm not going to live behind closed doors because he said you're not supposed to. Peace be unto you. And look at my hands. Look at my side. I am the son of God. Well, I feel like preaching, but I don't know how much y'all want to hear. Change to distress. Let me just ask you this morning, how many of you would like for Jesus to change your sadness into gladness? Change your mourning into a dance. Change your just unpraise unto praise. Hallelujah. Change your graves into gardens. Hallelujah. Change your valley of dry bones into a mighty army. Hallelujah. I'm just coming by to tell you, you he is, he's, in, he's invaded your room. He's invaded your room. But you got to receive the message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me finish. Let me finish the change of the distress. Hallelujah. And let me finish here with the command to their destiny. The command to their destiny, verse 22. And when he had said this, what did he say? Very important. Just don't read that verse. What did he say? He said, peace be unto you for the second time. As my Father has sent me, even so, 
send I you. And after he said this, not after what he said in verse 23, this was before verse 23. After he said what he said in verse 22, then, then he breathed on them and said to them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The command to their destiny. Their destiny was verse 21. To go. To go. As the Father has sent me, I now send you. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Help me out somebody. Hallelujah. It was the call. It was the destiny of these disciples that God had placed on their life to go. So here in verse 22 where he says, receive ye the Holy Ghost. This was a command to their destiny. This was a command. Just follow me here before I finish here. This was a command of empowerment. This was a command of his empowerment to his disciples to go. As the Father has sent me, I now send you. However, you can't be effective without the help of the Holy Ghost. So he breathed on them and he said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Can I just paraphrase some of this? Jesus was saying to them, You haven't been called to stay locked up behind these doors. <laughs> the anointing that God has put on you is not to be contained behind these locked doors. You are limiting yourself and you are limiting to what I want to do in you and with you and through you. Because you are choosing to lock the doors of fear of being hurt and the fear of being a pain and the fear of whatever it might be. And he said unto them, he says, the destiny of your life cannot, you cannot stay behind these doors. Go. As I have sent the Father, I now send you. He says, he says to them, you, you, you have more in you. You have more upon you. There's more that God has for you than staying behind locked doors. I'm, I'm call it prophecy if you want to. I'm speaking from my heart. Is God is wanting me to tell somebody today that that which he has for you is greater than you staying behind locked doors. Hallelujah. There's a greater anointing on your life. There's a greater purpose for your life. There's a greater future in front of you. There's greater in front of you, but you can't stay behind these locked doors. Hallelujah. There's an anointing on our life. There's an anointing on your life. Receive the help of the Holy Ghost. I said we're taking a journey to Pentecost. Pentecost, the day was fully come, and the Holy Ghost descended in Acts chapter 2. But before we ever got to Acts chapter 2, he began to talk to them. In the last 40 days of his life, he says, I haven't called you and you haven't been called to live in fear and live behind closed doors. I've called you and there's an anointing on your life, hallelujah, to get out there and do the work of the ministry. He said, however, I'm fully aware that you can't do it in yourself. I'm fully aware that if you rely on your own strength, you'll keep these doors locked. I'm fully aware if you rely on your own ability, if you rely on what you've heard or what you've been told, you'll stay right here. I'm telling you right now, but I've come by today to invade your door to tell you the Holy Ghost is able to help you go be who God's called you to be. What is that to be? What is that? Can I just connect some dots? I, I, I know I said close in five minutes ago. 
He hasn't called anybody in this room or anointed anybody in this room. None of his disciples have been called. Nobody has been called to live behind locked doors now that he's resurrected. Now that he's resurrected. Hallelujah. The help of the Holy Ghost. The help of the Holy Ghost. We study the Holy Ghost very quickly. I'm not going to... We study the Holy Ghost. We find throughout the scriptures there's many different characteristics and many different capabilities, many different ways of describing the Holy Ghost in scripture. Just, just follow me here. He's, he's power. After that, you shall receive power and the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. So he's defined as power. Power, dunamis, dynamite. Power to explode some things. Power to overcome some things. Power to defeat a habit. Power. Power. But he's not just power. And that's where a lot of Pentecostal preachers stop right there. And he is power. But I'm telling you today, there's a lot more that the Word of God talks about him. He's not just power, but he's a guide. He'll lead you. He'll lead you and guide you. Hallelujah. He's a teacher, the Bible says. He'll teach you. He's a counselor. He's a comforter. But let me break this thing down now. He's not only power. He's not only a guide. He's not only a counselor and a teacher. He's not only a comforter. He's not only a counselor. He is our paracletos. He is our paracletos. What does that mean? That's the Greek word for Holy Ghost. What does that mean? He is one that is called alongside of me. How can I open them doors? How can I, how can I li not live in that type of fear? How can I go on about the call of God and, and, and be what God's called me to be? What is that? To live the kingdom life? What is the kingdom life? It's not meat and drink, but it's what? It's righteousness. It's peace. And it's joy in the Holy Ghost. Because of the paraclete, God, the Holy Ghost, is walking alongside of me. So I shall not fear. I shall not live my life in bondage. I shall not keep myself from being all that God wants me to be because I will not open the doors and walk out. So he says, receive ye the paraclete. Receive ye the one who walks alongside of you and will help you along the way. So yes, he's power. Yes, he's comforter. Yes, he's counselor. Yes, he's teacher. Yes, he's a guide. Yes, he's all of those. But I'm going to tell you what I really like about him. He is my help. Today, folks, we need help. We need help. I feel his spirit. There's people today, you've allowed yourself to get locked behind closed doors. And rightfully so. Rightfully so. But Jesus has already walked through the door. And he says, receive the message of comfort and receive the message of confirmation. Go! Live your life of destiny. But do not fear because I have sent your paraclete to walk beside you. Would you stand to your feet this morning? Now's the time. Either you're going to leave this building with your mask on or you're going to leave this building with your mask off. 
Folks, I know how to wear a mask. Come on, you'll look at me like I'm crazy. I know how to live. I know how to wear a mask. I know how to let you think that you're close, but you ain't close. I know how to make you think that I'm living the life of lives, but on the inside I'm crying like a baby. Living in concern and fear. But the Lord is working on me. Tarek, I have called you beyond closed doors. There's a life beyond the life that you're living. It's time to get out of the closed doors and go live the kingdom life that I have called you to. It's time to live that life of abundance. It's time to quit living in that fear. So on the count of three, and I want you to bow your heads. On the count of three, I want you to make your way from that chair. I don't care if you're in the back. I don't care if you're in the middle. I don't care if you're on the front. It's time to get out in the house of locked doors. It's time to move out the house of the locked doors. But you got to receive the message of hope. you got to receive the message that God is able. And you must receive ye the help of the Holy Ghost. Because he's the only way I can make it. Come right now. Come right now. If you're lost, come. If you're saved, come. All I'm saying today, if you'll take the mask off and say to yourself that I am ready to get from behind these locked doors. Come right now. Come right now. I'm ready to get from behind these locked doors. I'm ready to get from behind these locked doors. No more. I'm ready. I, I don't care my friends. I don't care why. I, I'm ready today to get from behind these these locked doors. Hallelujah. Come right now. Sing if you would. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. We got young. We got middle aged. We got older. Hallelujah. These, God is here. He's here this morning. He, he's already invaded your door. Just receive what he has to offer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing please come. Please don't wait. Hallelujah. Come right now. Remain reverent to his spirit. Everybody remain reverent to his spirit. He's speaking right now. That's right. Come on. Come on. Come on. It don't matter who you are. Come right now. Come. I beg you to come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing. Hallelujah. 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 Come. Praise the Lord. I'm not afraid. Hallelujah. That's right. Come on. Come on. We still got Show time. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't worry about that person beside you. You come right now. Hallelujah. This is your day. This is your day. Hallelujah. This is your day. Hallelujah. Out of the yes. Yes. Hallelujah. There's not a place for mercy. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come. Don't wait. Come. Oh, there's not there's a place for better than you. Hallelujah. There's not a There's not me. Better than you. Hallelujah. That's right. Come on. Come on, we got time. Hallelujah, come on. Come on, it don't matter how long you've been saved. It don't matter. Come on, come right now. Hallelujah. Yes, let go. Hallelujah. There's nothing. Hallelujah. Turn shame, turn shame into glory. 
while the opportunity is here. Hallelujah. I commend, I appreciate all those today who took the mask off and said, I'm ready to get out from behind these locked doors. I'm ready to let the Holy Ghost lead me and guide me and help me to that kingdom life, the destiny that God has for me. Hallelujah. I believe in today that God has changed some distress to gladness. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We're not going to in any way try to interfere. We want them to continue to be ministered to and minister to each other. Hallelujah. I just want you to know, though, if you, when you leave this building, he's going to leave with you. He's going to leave with you. The only thing that's separating you from being out there in your destiny is yielding to the communication from Jesus and receive the communication and embrace your arm around it that he is in love with you and he is able to do what needs to be done. Hallelujah. Put your hands up this morning. The Lord says I'll bless you. The Lord says I'll keep you. I'll let my face shine down upon you and I'll give you grace and my countenance shall become your countenance and my peace shall become your peace. Father, I thank you today as we began the journey to Pentecost showing us today that we don't have to stay behind these locked, closed doors. I ask you now in the name of Jesus Christ that you would help us all today to begin to embrace the communication. Let the Holy Spirit help us, empower us to walk in that kingdom life. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The music of you will continue just to minister for us. Hallelujah. Don't forget about your missions on the way out. Don't forget about Wednesday night service. We'd love for you to be back here. And ladies. Ladies Bible study. I forgot all about ladies Bible study at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock ladies Bible study. There's some other announcements. I forgot all about them. But 5 o'clock ladies, be here if you would. We had 29 at the men, and you ladies need 30 to win. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful afternoon. Ladies, be here at 5 o'clock for your Bible study. You'll have a great time.